So welcome everyone. As you can see, Venerable Chanda is not here. She has gone to Norway for, uh, um, she is teaching a retreat in Norway. So I'm um, conducting the session today and uh, we are, can see I'm not at our usual residence. When, um, I'm in London at a, the house of one of my very good friends. So um, yes, but we will, Continue as usual. So perhaps we'll just start with uh, uh, just, uh, you know, um, maybe writing in the chat box how you feel or just sitting quietly and just making your mind still and ready for the, uh, for the session. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, if you'd like to write down how you feel or just just sit down and relax because it's Friday evening and uh, all you have to do is absorb the Dhamma. Nice. Yeah. Okay, we're on page 120. So perhaps we'll just um, close our eyes for a few seconds and um, you're saying something and just Ah, take a deep sigh, deep breath, and relax, bringing our mind into being here in our bodies, being here in this space. And noticing how we feel. Allowing ourselves to just be got nothing to do, nowhere to go, allowing our minds to be open and receptive. Feeling your body, feeling how you feel right now. I thought um, today 
there are several the sutta that we we were we were um, we were on page 120 but i thought we'd start with the sutta after that just to be different because it is a much more um it's like uh uh the one on page 123 a model of monastic harmony it's one that is just you know something we can all relate to so i thought we'd start with the number of the sutta on 123 and then move backwards just because that is a that is just such a rich sutta and one that is often quoted and hope well hopefully i'm sure a lot of people can relate to. So we'll just jump to page 123 um, and I'll read out uh, the sutta, a model of monastic harmony. And then we'll come back to the one on 121 and 122, if just. <laughs> okay, so we're on page 123, uh, a model of monastic harmony. Right. On one occasion, when the Venerables Anuruddha, Nandia, and Kimbila were living in the Gosinga Sala tree wood, the Blessed One went to visit them. When they heard he had arrived, all three went to meet the Blessed One. One took his bowl and outer robe, one prepared a seat, and one set out water for washing the feet. The blessed one sat down on the seat, made ready, and washed his feet. Then those three venerable ones paid homage to the blessed one and sat down at one side. When they were seated, the blessed one said to them, I hope you are all keeping well, Anuruddha. I hope you are all comfortable and not having any trouble getting arms food. We are keeping well, blessed one. We are comfortable and we are not having any trouble getting arms food. I hope, Anuruddha, that you are all living in concord, in mutual appreciation, without disputing, blending like milk and water, viewing each other with kindly eyes. Surely, Bhante, we are living in concord with mutual appreciation, without disputing, Blending like milk and water, viewing each other with kind eyes. But Anuruddha, how do you live, live thus? Bhante, as to that, I think, it is a gain for me. It is a great gain for me that I am living with such companions in the holy life. I maintain bodily acts of loving kindness toward these venerable ones, both openly and privately. I maintain verbal acts of loving kindness towards them, both openly and privately. I maintain mental acts of loving kindness towards them, both openly and privately. I consider I consider, why should I not set aside what I wish to do and do what they wish to do? Then I set aside what I wish to do and do what they wish to do. We are different in body, but one in mind. That is how, Bhante, we are living in Concord with mutual appreciation, without disputing, blending like milk and water, viewing, viewing each other with kindly eyes. Good, good. I hope that you will all abide diligent, ardent, and resolute. 
Surely, Bhante, we abide diligent, ardent, and resolute. But, Anuruddha, how do you abide thus? Bhante, as to that, whichever of us returns first from the village with arms food, prepares the seats, sets out the water for drinking and for washing, and puts the refuse bucket in its place. Whichever of us returns last, eats any food left over if he wishes, otherwise he throws it away where there is no greenery or drops in it in, into water where there is no life. He puts away the seeds and the water for drinking and for washing. He puts away the refuse bucket after washing it, and he sweeps out the refractory. Whoever notices that the pots of water for drinking, washing, or washing are low or empty, take care of them. If they are too heavy for him, he calls someone else by a signal of the hand, and they move it by joining hands. But because of this, we do, do not break out into speech. But every five days, we sit together all night discussing the Dhamma. That is how we abide, diligent, ardent, and resolute. So, this sutta, I don't know if you've all, if you have heard this sutta before, but this is the sutta from the after the Buddha left the nun monks of, of Kosambi. And he met this group. And if you remember the story of the monks of Kosambi, they were arguing over, 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 over well, whether to leave the lid, whether the, 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 whether the handle should, where, where, where the pot that has in the latrine that holds water, whether it should have the ladle in there or not. Anyway, that's what they were arguing about. And then the Buddha met these three monks and they were uh, living um, in harmonies. So this sutta is very, very often quoted by teachers as how a monastic community should live. I have to say, it used to drive me mad <laughs> when I heard this sutta at Pali class, when, at sutta classes or whenever, you know, a teacher used to come whenever Ajahn Brahm comes or he gives a talk and he, gives a talk, and he quotes the sutta and I used to, well, get quite annoyed because I did not feel like that. <laughs> and living in community and living in family and living with other people, these were three arhats, by the way. We do not behave like three arhats. So the the people that we live with are not arahants, and we are not arahants. And so you do not view the people necessarily that you live with with kindly eyes. You go like, I can't believe that person is such an idiot. <laughs> Isn't that obvious, you know? Can't they just, you know, whatever, clean up properly. So um, this is what comes up in my mind anyway when living in a monastery or living with one's family. And so the sutta is uh, uh, ideal, but our own minds are quite different. I don't know about yours, but mine is. So um, I guess is this is a a, a very uh, rich topic for for discussion because how do we get a mind to to um, live with other people and to view each other with kindly eyes because um, because people do irritating things <laughs> they do the wrong thing so um, yeah so I just thought um, I I. I'd share with you some ways that I've, uh, you know, coped with living in, in community and living with ourselves, living with family, and perhaps you will also have, have, uh, have, uh, have plenty to offer. So I'm, um, 
Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at my friend Indy here who's nodding. <laughs> She's nodding. She goes, that is very true. So, uh, yeah. So I, 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 uh, I was um, uh, thinking yesterday, there's, there's like when, when you live in a monastery, you live with people who have very different come from very different um, backgrounds. We are all from different cultures. We are all from different, you know, family backgrounds. So some of us were only children. Some of us had no parents. Some of us were very responsible. Others, you know, always kind of were the, were the youngest in the family, so they didn't have to do anything. So you wonder, what? How can you go up leaving, leaving me to do everything kind of a thing? Um, and uh, uh, after like many years of living with the same people, sitting next to them year in year out, for, like for more than more than day now, you have to learn to you have to learn to um, see things differently. So um, one thing that has helped me is that as I practice and I. Um, see myself more clearly, I realize how out of, con how, how much I believe that my way of doing things is right. Because that's just how I was just, that, that's just what my mother told me, or, you know, that's just what my society told me. So clean up your dishes of yourself, you know, and I just believe that because that's just what I was told. So one thing that's helped me is not is to realize that um, um, what I believe is just my belief. It is just my my way of seeing things, and someone else believes what they believe. Their way of thing, seeing things, um, and who is to say mine is right? Who is to say that my way of of, of 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 operating is is the is the correct way is there a right way of at all so um to see that our minds are just conditioned by our childhood by our um place in our family and um and seeing that that's seeing that someone else has a different different um, conditioning from their childhood or, or their conditioning. And, and just like I believe I am right, they believe they are right. So um, to just, just um, especially in a monastery, most people are very high-minded. They actually, I think all human beings, we're all just trying our best. We are all just out of our pre-programs, we are just um, acting the best way we know how. Um, as I grow older, I notice I'm doing exactly what my dad does. <laughs> it used to drive me bats. It drives my mother bats as well, you know. He lives in a cloud. He lives in a world. He, he's, he's very in intellectual. And anyway, he's he's lives in a world of thoughts. So when he drives, he, he, for example, he's a terrible driver because my mother calls him the constant driver. He drives constantly 70 kilometers an hour through, through, seven, through 60 zones, through 100 zones, through traffic lights because he's thinking all the time. So he's the constant driver of 70 kilometers an hour, regardless. He drives my mother back. He said, what are you doing? It's 60 kilometers an hour. I see myself doing the same thing. And really, I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm also the same. I live in my own cloud world of thoughts. And I just didn't notice the stop sign. I just didn't. So uh, um, I realize I'm just, uh, just uh, living out of my habits. And it's so hard to even notice them, leave alone, question them and change them. So my poor old dad, who's booted off the front seat, he knows he's a bad driver of what it is. 
he really can't help himself. So um, anyway, this is just something that helped me to understand other people because where um, I see myself really, and I see how I do what my parents did, what my grandparents did, and, and other nuns do what their parents did and their grandparents did. So um, anyway, I thought I'd uh, start with that and perhaps uh, others can uh, contribute at this stage at how they, how they view each other with kindly eyes and how they um, are able to uh, deal with the idiosyncr idiosyncrasies of our fellow humans. So if you have something to say, oh, there's, yeah, John, perhaps someone can unmute. Good evening, good evening. Venerable. Yeah, go good ahead. Evening, everybody. I was just thinking, uh, uh, recalling the visit I had to the Bihara and the house, well, admittedly, it was maybe because there also was a silent meditation day retreat going on, but I found, very harm I found it very harmonious. Mm -hmm. the the sort of quiet respect amongst each other and the service but the giving of service was really nice as well the mm -hmm. offering of dana the offering of dana and i felt mm -hmm. it it was seamless as well things things happened well they happened to a timing of course mm -hmm. but it was given with such sort of ease and the clearing up and that everything else was done with such sort of goodwill mm. as well. So I did get that. Mm. I did feel like that's what I thought was beautiful mm. <laughs> about. And if, mm. if we could recall that a little bit more often in our lives, you know, just in our daily mm. life, mm. Not, when in, not necessarily when we're in the Vihara, but also bringing that same sort of intention of sharing and, um, giving mm. <laughs> and they're really good right so I I, I, I was inspired <laughs> I always inspired um, mm -hmm. in, 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 a, in a monastery yeah, setting yeah. and it's interesting to hear from from yourself saying it's not always quite like that as well because people are coming from all different backgrounds but I find maybe when we're all coming from different backgrounds sometimes we give a little bit more sort of there's a little we hold back a little bit mm. and we sort of try to understand what people's needs are and what's the best mm. <laughs> so anyway yeah that's my take on it i mm. don't know just like to share that right, yeah. and i love that i love that i like i like the part of that sutta talking about even talking about composting vegetables and things like that mm. isn't it, it uh, doesn't it sort of mention that in right. <laughs> You know, not They're when taking, you have taking the bottle. Yeah, that's right. Yes, if there's no green, or it drops in, or it drops into water, and there is mm. the, where there's no life. So you're giving back something if you haven't, mm. if you didn't need it. You're actually, yeah. I thought that was beautiful. Mm. Yeah, pretty nice suitor. Right, uh, right. Yeah, that one of our vineyard rules that we don't um, destroy life so we don't put food where there are crops or you know oh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it would destroy something so yeah, yeah, yeah. as a yeah, as a, cool. a, a nun uh, in that day yeah. or now we're very uh, in harmony with the harmony with the nature and not uh, okay. harming anything that's right yes that's yes yes Thank that you. is it is really beautiful one thing beautiful of about to say is that nobody may takes measure of who did what you know if it was whether it was my turn to take the compost toilet compost out was it my turn to um, empty out say, prepare the seats you just do what was the job that needed to be done um, without thinking I do it every single day <laughs> yeah I have to I have to say, I, 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 say, I say, said what I said, but the community mm. that and the people I have lived with have actually all behaved like this, except maybe one. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, yeah. but uh, uh, even then, you know, they just had a reason. They just had a reason why they, they didn't. 
you know, for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, this uh, just doing what what uh, not thinking. Oh, uh, you know, just doing what needs to be done, having more. The other person's doing less. I'm just happy to do it. Happy to do it, and they contribute in other ways, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, continue. Let's see who was next. Uh, Shirley, may I ask you to unmute, please? Thank you, uh, Venerable, for um, bringing up this sutta. It's actually one of my favorite uh, right. suttas. Um, and um, it's and I'm really grateful the fact that you sort of, because I think it's beautiful and inspiring, I suppose, because I don't live in a community. And if somebody was sort of saying this to me, uh, you know, as an example, when I'd sort of blotted my copybook a bit, I think I'd find it very <laughs> challenging. Because <laughs> um, I don't always look at people with kindly eyes, um, especially um, when they disagree with me and I know that I'm right, you know. <laughs> Um, and I actually read this passage. Um, B was there. There's another little group that I that uh, that I, ha I help organise on Zoom, and we all read our favourite reading. And I chose this one. That was only last week. Wow. So, <laughs> um, but actually, oh, I, think, I think this uh, sort mm -hmm. of appears. This description of harmony appears twice in the middle length sayings. And I think on one occasion, if I'm right, right. Um, the three monks were arahants, and in the other one, oh, right. they were actually yeah. stuck. They were stuck in the upper upper Kalesa Sutta. They were stuck, but they were right. still living in harmony. Yeah. And when I read this, when um, I think it was Ajahn Brahm directing me to the upper Kalesa Sutta, where you know you can mm. get you can get stuck in meditation. And these wonderful monks were stuck, but they were behaving in this way. And I thought, surely this is why you don't get jhanas, because you're not looking at people with kindly <laughs> eyes enough. <laughs> so it inspired me to practice. You know, they you know, all this living in harmony, you're not going to get peaceful meditations mm. unless you actually mm. try and be um, you know live in harmony and look on others with yeah. kindly eyes and of course looking on ourselves with kindly eyes as well I think is is really important right. so that's my little reflection that I think as I understand it this is a practice that those monks uh did mm. on their on their path to arahantship mm. and then they were still behaving as enlightened mm. beings they were still living together in harmony I think it's so mm. beautiful and inspiring mm. but uh I can't pretend to live up to it yet, <laughs> but it's still a really good one. It just opens my heart to think about it. So it's just such a lovely, as as the other guy was saying, you know, when you witness or you feel you're in this harmonious situation, it's so beautiful. So why do we sort of get all, you know, angry with other people? Because it's it's very contracting, isn't it? We still do it. We still so mm. I'm, I'm I'm sort of mm. grateful that you shared your own challenges <laughs> because it's uh, I, I'm just very grateful for that. I think it's very 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 nice that you did that. So 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 thank you. But I'm sure you always live in harmony with your with with your fellow um, fellow bikunis <laughs> most of the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, who was next? Who uh, was next? Susie, may I ask you to unmute, please? Hi, <clears throat> Hi Pika. Good to see you. Um, well, um, I've finally got the book, so I've got it here with me. <laughs> um, been reading it, and um, what came to mind was sort of like. Um, dependent origination and like how mm. we can sort of build ourselves up to be a certain character um, I'm not sure how mm. to I'm not sure how to describe it but like I've been stuck on dependent origination for so long and it clicked recently and um, it's mm. sort of like conditioning as you said conditioning sort of um, 
a great a great mm. part of who we are um so what i like to do um mm. i try and look at people with kindly eyes um i try and do that myself actually mm. um but i'm not always perfect so i just try and take myself a step back and think all right it could have just been like my conditioning to think that way if that makes sense mm. um yeah and and um what i like to do is when i walk about or go about the house i just think um i look at i look at a bird or I look at a butterfly and i think oh may you be happy and well little butterfly <laughs> i know it's random but um it's something that i try and like foster this kindness towards everything i see so i look at people with kind of eyes <laughs> That, that sort of like click that that sort of like um relatable <laughs> yeah yeah i wondered if you experience wow. anything like that thank you very much no you that's welcome. that's really beautiful thank you for sharing that i'm where uh, anmodana <laughs> it's so lovely to hear yeah one thing that does does help is to see the beauty it is true to see the beauty in in a butterfly or what we do have you know our whole attitude is what's getting things right and getting things done and getting getting on but um being grateful like you say for um for what there is and so the people that we live with you know they might find irritating thing but uh uh to notice their then their their to be grateful for all the good all the goodness that they do which we well i don't notice always but i'm so happy to hear yeah thank you very very much this thank you for sharing <laughs> okay i think um whoever was next madhu may i ask you to unmute madhu thank you um hi venerable pika um i have um it's more like a question uh, so yes as yeah. everyone else said this sutta is very inspiring and uh, it's like the standard mm. that we should all aspire mm. towards um mm. but as we are not enlightened uh, it's clearly not mm. easy um i was mm -hmm. thinking recently uh like in our lay life um in different situations where we have to work with others um and live in communities uh whether it's your workplace or your friend circle or your family or uh whichever it may be um sometimes when you uh i'm sure many can uh many of us have been in these situations where no matter how kind we are and um mm -hmm. uh it's and you do your best and yet it's not appreciated mm -hmm. and sometimes mm -hmm. your kindness mm -hmm. and your passiveness can be viewed as a weakness and then sometimes mm -hmm. like as an unenlightened person it's very difficult to mm -hmm. uh always accept it um every day you know like um or every week so how do you stand up for yourself without allowing ill will to arise inside of you like how do you stand up for yourself yeah without mm. having any anger or saying mm. anything that would hurt the other person but at the same time kind of protect yourself Mm. you know like rather than just You're always quiet and, uh, right, right, and yeah. always accepting yeah. and, i mean you could to a certain extent i mean if you have really good med meditations and like equanimity and mm. stillness of the mind i guess you could see things as just coming and going like just words entering and <laughs> leaving from the other ear but this is not something that you can do every week right every so how do you like just like my 
go to way has been like just shut up <laughs> you know just just mm -hmm. keep quiet mm -hmm. you know just take it yeah. but it's yeah. hard yeah that's my go to way as well <laughs> <laughs> Um, I heard Ajahn Brahm say yeah. things like, Ajahn Brahm says something like, oh, um, you just, like somebody asked this question, uh, someone, sometimes people treat you, treat, I mean, the person who was asking the question, they were like, sometimes people treat you like a doormat, they just walk all over you. And they asked this question mm -hmm. from Ajahn Brahm, and Ajahn Brahm said something like, oh, I'm like a donut. People will call up with me all the time, but I'm like, okay, I jump right. you, could, you, you can do it, but yeah. <laughs> how does the right. lay person right. do it? Right, 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 right. Very inspiring to see um, that, that there are beings that can. Yeah, can. yeah, yeah. Actually, our perception of being a doormat is just our perception, you know. We think someone, we, we, we make up that story. I am a doormat and someone is walking all over me. That person is just doing their thing. And actually, in the end, I've learned that if someone is so-called behaving in um, what I would Im imagine to be selfish ways or whatever and and being narcissistic or whatever it is actually that is their problem and it is their a great amount of suffering for that person how they behave unskillfully it comes back to them and and um actually you you can see the suffering in it so my being feels sense of I am a doormat. That's just my my version of reality. For my um, I put myself in. I, I tell that story to myself, but I can still, you know, um, uh, do the same thing of not speaking or of not reacting with anger, not saying something um with when you're in a you know like irritated state of mind i can still restrain myself in that way uh, um, um but, I but uh, not at on that story of the door yeah yeah it just yeah. also reminded me that in a previous yeah. talk you said your go-to way is use compassion you yeah. mentioned yeah yeah just to see yeah. that yeah. people yeah. are suffering yeah as well right right, right 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 using compassion i try to use yeah right and I have situations like that. Right, right, right. My friend Indy, who's sitting in front, said he also. Um, I tried that. Just, you want to speak up a bit? No, I just said, yeah. listening to what you said. Yeah. Venerable Becca, I feel that. You speak uh, up a bit. Yeah. Oh, I should be very loud. Yeah, yes. So, uh, uh, no, I just, I think for me, um, when I, um, I mean, I, I'm, you know, very human. I feel angry. I can feel mm. jealous. I can feel mm. frustrated. Mm. But sometimes I have a quiet moment. I just think just mm. compassion, compassion, mm. really. Um, and as you mm. said, when people mm. are narcissistic mm. or, or, you know, that's a weakness, mm. you know, not, they're not weakness, but that's their suffering. suffering. They're suffering. Mm. So um, I don't know, mm. you know, you, mm. I, don't, I don't do a lot of deep meditation. Mm. And if, if I can, even, even with deep meditation, I think you're still on a journey, mm. you know, you know, you still have, you experience human, you know, human weakness and human mm. suffering and human, mm. what do you think, mm. Rebecca? I don't know, you, you. <laughs> I could, any, but people hear that? Yes, you could? Yeah. Oh, great, 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 great. No, I mean, she was just saying that uh, 
um, um, yeah, it's it's true. If someone behaves in a, you know, stomping all over you, so to speak, it's actually a lot of suffering. Mm -hmm. It's a, a having a big ego or having a, a temperament that walks over other people is very painful. So mm -hmm. actually, um, you feel sad. You feel sorry for their suffering. And how what yeah. do you do? What, what, I, what would I do? I guess when my mind is uh, um, changed from being frustrated, then I speak. Yeah, it might take a while. Sometimes it takes quite a while. Sometimes it takes a year. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I see, you take time. I take time. I take and then time. When you yeah. speak, you don't really react because you've calmed yes. down. A lot. Yes, I've calmed down. Yeah. That's a yeah. That's really yeah. Of course, I, I have the luxury of, of time, so maybe we don't always get have that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you, Madhu. Thank you. And um, let's see, uh, Sean, I think, next. Yeah. Sean, Anyone? Sean. Yes, Sean. Yeah, yeah. Sean, may I ask you to unmute, please? Uh, but... <laughs> Poor Sean. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Sean. Um, yes, no, thank you. This is a lovely sutta. I've never come across it. Um, and I really feel like it's, it's reminding me that I've kind of drifted away in some ways. And I think I'm particularly bad, particularly, you know, with work and maybe at home. These are where maybe I, I, my behavior gets or on all these things worse. And, and I thought it was really interesting what John said. I had exactly the same experience in the Bahara, just like everything was seamless. Um, mm. But I, I think that's potentially for a couple of reasons. I think my, well, clearly my behavior and my actions, I was making a real effort um, mm. with all these things. And you're with like-minded people tr doing the same thing. So I think right. when you're around like-minded people in any environment, it always makes it easier. And especially when we're talking yeah. about something like this. Um, so then it just made me think, well, um, it's, it makes it a lot more difficult in what I call sort of more the real world for me in the family or, or certainly work where you have to get things right and, oh, this is right, this is wrong. And But what I have noticed and what's mentioned in here is particularly maybe the mental acts what it mentions, I think, the way you think, obviously, if you can, that starts from there. If you catch mm. your thinking, and I like, it reminds us about the way you think in private as well as, or, or speak in private as well as in front of others. Mm. If you can think in a certain way, it allows you to then speak and act in a certain, certain way. And, and going on to what some people have mentioned about you know how other people act and, and if it's not the right way well oh, I've noticed if I'm patient and if I've got confidence in what's happening and in everything else I know it will turn out okay and, and you will see that suffering and if I don't react when I react that causes trouble you know if someone's rude to me shouts at me and I manage to not react I feel much better mm. and like you mm. were saying this isn't my problem it's not me mm. I can't take on I think Ajahn Brahm says it be like a rubbish bin it but with a hole in the bottom mm. <laughs> so it goes straight mm. clean mm. um but of course this is just really difficult to, to do it perfectly um but I, I really like this in this conversation because it's kind of like bringing me back to yeah I've got a try and that, do that more because whenever I do it and the more you do it then it reinforces itself because then you get mm -hmm. caught because it's like oh yeah I noticed yeah. I did this and this worked so yeah I, I don't I haven't got a question but there were just some reflections and also talking about it just helps then hopefully <laughs> me put it into place more yeah, yeah. thank you thank you very much mm -hmm. uh, thank you thank you Yes, sometimes when we we realize what uh, what we are 
what we kind of know, it tells us to re or go, oh, that's it, that's it, that's what I need to do. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, just before Sue, I go back to Susie, uh, I'll just read some of the things on the um, chat box. Um, Kim says, not everyone who treats others badly is suffering. Some are completely oblivious, I think. Uh, true, true, they are ob oblivious. Um, interesting, yeah, I wonder. If they did it with unwholesome or um, unwholesome intentions, then it then they, they it, it's painful but some people yeah they just kind of don't notice things <laughs> um hmm. yeah i guess that it's, uh, it's their business i don't know <laughs> did you have anything to say to that kim or Oh, I think you have to be asked to be unmute. Yeah. Uh, can we unmute Kim or? Kim, Kim can, can you unmute, please? Oh. I don't really know what to say. I mean, it's just that my, my husband, who is, <laughs> he has no malice at all. He is a completely nice person yeah. and he does the most awful things. And it, it's extremely hard to live with. Um, and, you know, I mean, he really dreadful things. <laughs> and and, um, and so, I, you know, so I get really upset and angry. And I mean, he's not, I, I mean, people, yeah. when I see people like somebody like Putin, I can look at him and think, that man is mm -hmm. must be suffering horribly you know he's really a mess <laughs> and so i can actually feel compassion for him but when andrew does these awful things because he doesn't know <laughs> i just I, <laughs> I find it very difficult i just feel anger and not very much compassion it's, it's really amazing <laughs> to see it really is I do a, um, another a, a woman who had a husband like that in Australia, actually, and she said that they always said he was like um, a benevolent steamroller, and I, that seems <laughs> quite well. <laughs> yeah. uh, my dad is a little bit like that, and my mom has suffered <laughs> for many years. <laughs> But I can tell you, she has she has patience like no one else has. Ah, so it's she, yeah, <clears throat> and she can put up with the most amazing stuff. So she takes that to practice. She said, "Look, I'm just going to meet next lifetime, so I might just just do it in this lifetime." <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, she is, she, she has incredible patience. So maybe he's your teacher. Yes, I do try <laughs> to, to see it that way. Um, doesn't work very often. <laughs> and the, the other thing, I love that, um, those words, kindly eyes. And I, I find it so beautiful. And, you know, um, very often yeah. I'll, I'll think to myself, okay, Kim, mm. kindly eyes, kindly eyes, you know, when I see him coming. Mm. <laughs> and it, sometimes it helps. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I'll shut up now. It's just a thought. <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure many people relate. <laughs> Okay, and another another one is maybe those people who are most oblivious to the harm they are causing need more passion, right? That was from age. Also, don't you think that the world and the human race would be far more accomplished if they got religion out of their thought process and learn more from Mother Nature? True, 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 true. Learn from Mother Nature, yes. Okay, I think that is from, okay, let's go to Susie. Susie, may I ask you to unmute, please? Hi, sorry for putting in again. Um, 
I was just going to build up on um, what some other people have said, and um, it it sort of came came to my mind that um, the simile of a saw. Have you heard, as as anyone here heard of that? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. I know it's a bit I, extreme. I, I, I don't know if I heard. Yeah. It's a bit extreme, but um, it goes. It's like the whole suitor goes from um, goes from like a very minor. Uh, thing like spitting on the ground and still directing love and kindness to them to like being sawn in half <laughs> and it's so extreme but like um <laughs> and the message is that to keep mm. that mind of loving kindness mm. no matter what this this person is doing um for example there was um there was like this one time when like somebody came around and had a had a jar like a, a pack of, of eggs like pickled eggs and it was so mm. it was so disgusting <laughs> like I couldn't I wasn't meditating at the time but like um I had this very strong aversion to eggs and honestly um I I managed to like turn that around with loving kindness <laughs> and it was so um it was so interesting how loving kindness sort of quelled that feeling of anger um towards mm. this person because they hadn't done anything wrong it was all my, it was all me it was all like um right. my point of view like if that makes sense mm. Mm. wow yeah you are a very wise young person <laughs> oh thank, thank you, you. and um uh, we'll go on to to Bill, because we've only got a few minutes left. Bill, may I ask you to unmute, please? Hi. <laughs> this couldn't be more appropriate. You know, I live, I'm married 20 years and have three teenage boys. The weight of the dishwasher door must be three to 400 pounds, because nobody besides me can open it. <laughs> and put their dishes in. <laughs> it's, it's impossible. <laughs> it, it just, it's, I have, uh, I put dishes in, in young men's beds to kind of remind them that maybe when you're done eating, you should put your bowl or your drink or your, <laughs> but it's, uh, and as a father, you know, to, it's so important for me to always approach them, particularly my sons, without a heavy hand, with a sense of compassion and love. Though sometimes, if you don't put your stuff away, I am going to put everything in your bed or I'm going to take your phone or something. Because <laughs> it's just living with three teenage boys can be disgusting. And then a wife who she cannot get anything in the dishwasher either. It's where they get it. <laughs> or shut off a light or shut a cabin. So I have to, so I have to always focus on the positive. You know, my wife does so many things. We've been together for over 20 years. Yeah. So I always have to look yeah. at, she can't live to my standards. Mm. I shut off lights. She leaves them on. But then she'll do grocery shop or she'll do all this other stuff. So I always have to think, all right, before I get upset, mm -hmm. where I start nagging at her, mm -hmm. what are her possible things? Mm -hmm. My son's mm -hmm. there's, it's just clean up after yourself. <laughs> you filthy little animals. That's what I tell them. <laughs> They're wonderful boys. They're wonderful life lessons I have to teach them for someday they will have live in a community <laughs> I can relate with kids <laughs> oh, they'll have three teenage boys <laughs> the smells the smells uh, yes there's a lot of laughing on him, sure, silently. 
Okay. Um, well, we've got only um, a few minutes left. And I think, uh, I feel I should actually read the sutta that I skipped before we finish, even though it is kind of, uh, kind of a big suit as well, but I feel like to do it. And then we will finish off for, so the next one we'll just, we'll just, we'll just read and enjoy. But uh, anyway, thank you everybody for sharing all of that. I think we all relate to, all relate to um, each other in the same way. Um, okay, I'll just, Let's read um, the criteria for spiritual of spiritual worth. What do you think, great king? Suppose you were at war and a battle was about to take place. Then a Katia youth would arrive, one who is untrained, unskilled, unpracticed, inexperienced, timid, petrified, frightened, quick to flee. Would you employ that man? Surely not, Bhante. Then a Brahmin youth would arrive, a Vesa youth, a Siddha youth who is untrained, quick to flee, etc., etc. Would you employ that man and would you have use for such, such a man? Surely not, Venerable Sir. What do you think, great king? Suppose you are at war and a battle is about to take place. Then a Kati youth would arrive, one who is trained, skilled, practiced, experienced, brave, courageous, bold, ready to stand his place. Would you employ that man? I would, Bhante. Then a Brahmin youth would arrive, a Vesa youth, a Suddha youth, who is trained, ready to stand his place. Would you employ that man? I would, Bhante. So too, great king, when a person has gone forth from the household life into homelessness, no matter from what clan, if he has abandoned five factors and possesses five factors, then what is given to him is of great fruit. What five factors have been abandoned? Sensual desire, ill will, dullness and drowsiness, restless and remorse, and doubt. What five factors does he possess? He possesses the aggregate of virtue of one gone, one beyond training, the aggregate of concentration of one beyond training, the aggregate of wisdom of one beyond training, the aggregate of liberation of one beyond training, the aggregate of knowledge and vision of one beyond training. Thus, what is given in to one who has abandoned five factors and who possesses five factors is of great fruit. As a king intent on winning war would employ a youth skilled with the bow, one endowed with strength and vigor, but not the coward on account of his birth. So even though he of low birth, one should honor the person of noble conduct the sagely man in whom are established the virtues of patience and gentleness. So we will stop there and, uh, and uh, 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 oh, Aya Sumedha has something to say. Thank you, Aya. Aya Sumedha, may I ask you to unmute, please? Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, can hear yes. you. Okay. So I was thinking that uh, we have this situation that comes to us. And if we have like collect a certain kind of tools, and then we can use one tool at a certain time when it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. So these tools are patience, one tool, another is kindness, loving kindness, mm -hmm. another is equanimity. Another is just to remember that this is the nature of sansara that we are living in. Mm -hmm. It's the dukkha of separating from loved ones and uniting with unloved ones. Uh, sometimes uh, we can just think that this person is the owner of their own karma 
and I am the owner of my camera. So in that way, it's kind of like just breaks you like from uh, going another step forward, being angry or irritated or doing something irresponsible. So that's what I want to add. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for always sharing something very meaningful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always lovely to see you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we will stop there for today. And, and uh, I guess I'm, thank you everyone. It's nice to see you. And I, uh, we'll see you again next week. <laughs>